My name is Jonathan Yeo, and like probably a lot of you, I'm unable to get to my place of work at the moment. So I've set up this little temporary studio at home, and I'm spending some of the lockdown seeing if it's possible to paint portraits over FaceTime. I've never worked in this way before, and I've never really had people watching the whole process. So it will be an interesting experience for me. You'll see everything, including the mistakes, no doubt. You'll also get to witness uh, what goes on in portrait sittings and uh, how you gradually get a sense of someone's personality and try and translate that onto a canvas. About halfway through this picture and it's starting to come together. It looks quite dumb, but that's because I've put paint down and now it's a case of I've got to move it around and make it look a bit more like her. I'm not sure I've got the sort of shape of the face right. Uh, and it's a bit flat at the moment, um, but hopefully that's what we'll start to get right in this session. Yeah, I don't know, I always feel quite, I always feel a bit unsure when I'm in the middle of something. I feel like there's loads wrong with it, but actually sometimes it's more subtle than I think. Um, anyway, I won't try and overthink it now. I'm gonna call her up, see if we can get it started. It's a funny process, this, because it, it's one of those things where <clears throat> to having to sort of like remember the limitations of what uh, what's there, and actually sometimes the slight limitations are quite a interesting thing because it means you're forced to just do what you can see. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's something about the way, obviously, the, the cameras. Yeah, because they're two-dimensional and the screen's two-dimensional, it flattens things out. And it was interesting when I saw your, the angle from across the room, it reminded me how interesting your face is in a sort of, you know, structurally. And so actually it's made me sort of like realise a few things wrong with this, which I now need to investigate. <laughs> I mean, think how liberating it will be for you when you get to sit with an actual human in the future and you're like, wow, I can see your whole face. It's going to be a moment. When you're when you're working in this way, how do you then decide? Right, well, you know that's the angle, or that's the expression, or or that's the the moment to capture. You know, how how do you decipher that? Well, I'm still figuring that out as I go along, really. <laughs> um, uh, but I think um, what you try and basically what you do is it's the same. That actually, I guess as normal, which is that you are sort of slightly distilling various different expressions and the way people's faces move is where their personality comes out and so yeah. what you try and do is get a give it a sense overall that it's a still image that someone's sitting still but you bring into it certain bits that happen when they move and if you if it when it works it seems to just kind of uh suggest lots of aspects of their personality which you wouldn't get from a single photo um but it does, when it doesn't work, when you get it wrong, it's a bit of a mess. And so that's always the sort of thing. Well, absolutely. And I guess also for you, it's kind of case by case, because every time it's going to be different with, I guess, the person that you're working with, also how you're feeling on the day and yeah. your own energy levels. I think there's so much that, that comes into play with creativity in that way. It's not just this is a formula and this is how it works. I wonder, like, how much of what you do you think is perhaps um, a science or a process because I've been really surprised when I quiz people about this like quite recently I interviewed Tom Kerridge to me you know people that are really amazing chefs I often think there's so much uh, artistry behind it and sort of science and he said oh no this is not art in any way. It's not creative at all. It's just like, I'm a builder. I'm just building stuff. And I was like, wow, maybe you're doing yourself a discredit there because I see it so differently. But, you know, that, I guess it's how it, it, it feels. What, what is it for you? Like, is, is there an element that is sort of scientific or, or a process or is it all just sort of free-flowing creation? Well, I, I guess I, a part of it is... Because I again, I mean, because I, I didn't study art properly. I've been watching some of um, Keith Tyson's isolation art school videos where 
he's like he's got a system for everything and I'm slightly envious thinking oh wow I mean that would save me so much time if I had a system I was also caught a bit of Jamie Oliver um doing something on you know, one of his cookery programs at home and was like well you know we haven't got those things so we'll just use what we have got here and actually this is really good and uh it's a reminder that actually and I think very often talking to chefs you realize that things they've invented often come not from like kind of a massive experiment but just because they didn't have the usual things to hand so they tried something else but then knowing having the kind of yeah you know, being able to sort of judge what's working quickly uh and you know make sure you don't do it if it, if it, if it isn't that's that often i think comes from experience and the or you know, whether it's experience or instinct or a bit of both that instinct question is interesting because um you know, anyone who is very good at what they do, I don't think it is one thing. You know, there are so many um, <clears throat> parts to making up a skill or someone being very good at something. But even if I look at my son, Rex, who's seven, who's he, he just knows how to play the piano. And that is to him instinct. Like he knows, he understands rhythm. He's not been taught it. You know, he, Jesse might teach him where to put his hands. But then once he's playing the song, he understands that it needs to be accentuated in certain areas. For him, you know, watching him, he's only been playing piano for, you know, under a year. And it's all instinct, you know, to him, it just yeah. feels good. So I think maybe later down the line, you can apply that understanding that it's a little bit of experience that helps nudge you in the right direction. But I think, you know, like most people who are starting out in perhaps their music career... That's all instinct. They don't have any experience. That's just them mm. doing what feels right. So, yeah, I guess it's it can incrementally be led by experience, but there's got to be, uh, you know, yeah. fundamental, you know, intuitive um, feeling. I think behind it. I wouldn't. It's a little bit might well be genetic because I think a lot of people I know um, have you know kind of family who are you know do quite often other things you know creatively you know, some you know, artists have musicians for parents and vice versa but you know obviously Jesse is someone who's uh you know also grown up with you know musicians in the family uh and that must so there's they have a second generation of that it's very interesting yeah oh god I mean that again is just um it's sort of almost mysterious to me sort of watching how you see that filter through the generations you know and and again, you know, Jesse will hear a song and he doesn't read music and he wasn't traditionally taught how to play. He just sort of understands it. And I think that is so often the case with um, with creative stuff and also if you've inherited it, you know, because I, I can sort of see with my own parents, my dad's a really good artist um, and I copied him a bit and watched him a bit, but I think some of that is just genetics. Well, it's interesting how people just create in different ways, don't they? You know, some people, you know, especially songwriters can only work at night and that's when it flows them. And, and you know, I, I mean, for me, I could never work at night. My God, it's my worst nightmare. I like to sort of kick things off as soon as I can and and use that fresh energy in a day. but. I find that so interesting as well, you know, people have to have often the right scene or time of day or way that they yeah. do things to to access, I guess, that clarity. I mean, I find that some of it's, it, it, a lot of it's just to do with the focus. And so, yes, if you're too tired, that makes it less easy to focus. On the other hand, um, you know, back when I used to drink a bit more than I do, I, um, I used to find that hangovers are an interesting thing because, I mean, actually sort of working when you're, drunk or anything else tends to not work very well. Hangovers are interesting because obviously a bad hangover isn't terrible because you, you get so sort of kind of unable to make any decision. Even the tiniest thing becomes a sort of you know, dilemma. But a slight hangover was often rather effective because I, I, I was only, you know, to focus on one thing and not be, you know, uh, you know kind of pulled in several directions um, uh, actually meant you could sometimes get a lot done. Um, and similarly, working at night, I mean, I, you know, I tend to, these days prefer to work during the day, but you know, certainly when I'm in the, you know, uh, in the run into an exhibition or something and almost always behind and trying to kind of you know, pull more hours of the day, just work, working late, um, and I still do it sometimes, it, you know, you, there aren't any, your phone's not ringing, no one's coming in and asking you anything. Yeah. It's just that thing of just being able to fully get into what you're doing. 
um, and you can sometimes you know get twice as much done as you would in the same amount of hours in the day. The, the hangover thing's really interesting because I certainly did some of my best radio shows at Radio One really, really hungover. And I think it's because usually I'm such a perfectionist. So there's that element of like you trying a little bit too hard and thinking yeah. a little bit too much about yeah. your next move. Whereas you don't give a shit when you're hungover. All you're doing is yeah. thinking, I hope I survive the next three hours. And I just want to go and eat loads of toast. Yeah. So you're just getting yeah. through it. And you are just a little bit more... Well, I guess it's all about being relaxed, isn't it? I think yeah. everything flows better. Painting, you know, writing, broadcasting, when you're relaxed. And when you're not and you're on edge and you're a little bit, you know, kind of wanting it to all go perfectly, that's when it just it all gets a bit stuck. And I... I mean, I'm certainly not brave enough to do much of a hangover these days because I barely drink, so I'd be an absolute wreck. But back when I could, you know, easily go out until the early hours and then roll in and sort of be fine, yeah. it, it did just add an element of, um, yeah, just relaxed ease about it, which mm. I actually really miss, really. That's a funny thing to say, but I do kind of miss that. I don't really have that work anymore because I'm so focused on what I want to do. I um, yeah. I don't allow much room for error, which maybe I need to. Definitely in the last few years, I've got much more, I understand much better, you know, when I, I like the picture best. Well, it's almost what you're, you know, so well known for as well. It is having those moments where you've left... Um, a blank or something, I guess. It, it, is the idea for the observer to make up their own mind about it? Is, is that the, the, the point that you're putting across? Or is it, or is it just because yeah. for you that, that, that sits better? There's an element of mystery to that. Yeah, it's a good question. I, I certainly, I know that I like, often like paintings by other people. I was, when I was younger, I used to love seeing other artists work unfinished work partly because you see a bit more of the process maybe the, what they'd started doing but hadn't finished so you get to understand how they were constructing it but I don't I haven't only sort of analyzed it in recent years I think there's a part of it is exactly as you say that we like to yeah you know, if we're given everything when you see a photorealist painting for me it's often very impressive that someone's put that much effort into it and they've got that sort of like precision but it's sort of often very cold. I mean, I don't have an emotional reaction to it. Yeah, Whereas yeah. things which are part precise, figurative, highly detailed, and other parts are unfinished or even abstract, I find much more interesting. I find I look at those pictures much longer. I've definitely been much more intrigued about paintings where I can sort of see the technique or elements of that layering. And also, like you say, you know, that there's, there's so much more emotion in artwork like that where you can see I guess uh, also not only about the subject that's painted but how the artist was feeling you know you can really see the materials used and how it was manipulated that that says to me more more about the artist than it does the person and maybe how they were trying to interpret that subject as well which I think is yeah. really interesting. Thank you. Hi, Bye. 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 Is it better? Some things are better about it, but some things I think I've made worse now. I think there's still something going on with the shape of her face. But I can see it's particularly this little jawline there, but maybe it's a bit there too. I mean, her eyes are a tiny bit too big. Hmm, mouth's looking back, she's pouting a bit too much. Some of it's good. <laughs>